positive, healthy diet has four kind of main principles to it. So principle number one, which we'll cover in a bit more detail once we've put all principles in, is taking in the right amount of energy. So if we say right amount of energy. So there's principle number one, and we'll cover that in a bit more detail in a few moments' time after we've gone over the other three principles. The second principle we want to address is taking the right amount, the right amount of each nutrient. And what we mean by that is you know, making sure that we have, on average, across a period of time, the right proportion of protein, of fats, of carbohydrates, for example. We also want to consider as our third principle, balancing, balancing, balancing energy input and output, energy input and output. And then finally, as our fourth principle, we want to be considering, number four, there we go, we want to be considering eating the right amount of energy needed. So right amount of energy. And you might be thinking, well, this is very similar to number one, but I want to say specifically here for different people. And I really want to differentiate between sort of active and non-active people when we get to that principle. So let's go right back to the start, look at the right amount of energy. Now, if you're not sure what a calorie is, a calorie is the uh, the amount of heat required to increase one gram of water by one degree Celsius. I'm not going to get into the details of that, but it's quite a small amount of energy, okay? So when we talk about the right amount of energy, we really want to have a look at this and how this plays out for the different sexes, for, for males and for females. And what we can find about the right amount of energy is that, in general, females require in the region of 2,000 kilocalories per day and this is on average okay so we're arguing that females will require 2000 thousand calories okay so remember this this unit here is a thousand calories per unit and that's what i meant before with the calorie being a very small unit whereas males will require on average remember with lots of exceptions in the region of 2500 kilocalories per day and this is for base metabolism and what i mean by this is this is about any additional activity built onto our day so to stay healthy this is the kind of nutritional requirement that human beings need so we have that slightly higher on average sort of energy energy requirement for men now in terms of the right amount of each nutrient i mean depending on what you read here different things will take on different kind of proportions but you might be sort of surprised to realize that we're talking about 60% or so of the diet being carbohydrate. Now that does not mean we eat two tons of pasta every single day. It means that we take carbohydrates from things like cereals, also from vegetables. Um, but 60% of our diet there or thereabouts is gonna be carbohydrates. Now it depends what you read um, for, the, for the proportions of other nutrients, but if we take fats or lipids, you know, obviously you're, you guys are learning quite a lot about lipids in your uh, biology courses, but fats would be in the region of around about 20 to 25 percent some studies say up to 30 percent so just to be clear around about a quarter fifth to a quarter of our overall dietary intake should be taken up with fats and we'll come back to that and then finally our proteins and of course you guys again you see proteins and broken down into amino acids and broken down in the stomach in the presence of proteases i know you do a lot of that um in your in your biology studies now what we're talking about with proteins is that they need to be 15 to 20 percent 20 percent of dietary intake okay so that's the right proportion so of however many calories we take in on average these are the proportions that we should be considering now with balancing energy input and output i want to give you three scenarios in fact i'm going to kind of draw you down here so we've got a bit more space i want you to imagine if i just draw you down here i want you to imagine the following situations i want you to imagine that energy in energy in equals energy out okay so imagine that energy in equals energy out in other words an individual consumes the right quantity of energy for the amount of energy expenditure or energy release they have so if they're particularly active they take on more food if they're not very active essentially they take on less food for example now what do you think the output of this would be this would be the output of stable weight or no weight gain no loss this person would remain at a stable presumably healthy weight what about if energy in energy in was 
to be less than energy out. What would you expect to happen in this scenario? Okay, so we've got energy in is greater than energy, uh, sorry, is less than energy out. So in other words, this person is consuming too few calories for the energy they're expending. This person would lose weight over time, not all in one go. You know, this is a gradual thing. And what about, and it's kind of obvious, right? What about if energy in was greater than energy expended than energy out? What would this happen? What would happen to this person in terms of their weight? Well, of course, in general terms, they would gain weight. Now, I want to re-stress the point I made before. We are not arguing here that this would happen in one day over a few hours. This is a general picture. If we generally, and this is a big issue for lots of people, if we generally consume more energy than we are spending, so think about someone you know who's doing an office job, who's driving to and from work. Maybe it could be a young person at school who's sitting in a school chair all day, every day gets picked up gets dropped off, doesn't do activity in the evenings, watch telly all night, computer games, whatever, that person is likely to put weight on, right? Equally, you know, you might see aspects of this as really unhealthy. Certainly fluctuating between can be quite unhealthy. But here, in extreme cases, this can lead to things like um, eating disorders and what have you. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of that as beyond the scope of this lesson. What we want to aim for as human beings is that as far as possible, we maintain a stable, healthy weight. That doesn't need to be done on an individual day. On your birthday, eat cake. No one's arguing anything against that. But generally, consume the right number of calories, generally be active and your weight will remain stable. There are a couple of exceptions that we're not gonna cover here. And finally, the right amount of energy for different people. So what I'd like to say here is that someone who is physically active, let's call them an athlete, needs to up their calorific intake, okay? Whereas someone who is very sedentary, think about, I don't know, someone who's got a leg, let's say someone who's broken a leg, Kind of not a very nice example, but someone who's sedentary, you know, someone who's broken their leg is not going to move around a great deal for six to 12 weeks. That person needs to decrease their calorific intake. And that comes back to my very first point, which was that these are average values, not specific values, and it very much depends on the kind of activity that we're actually doing. Anyway, I hope that's a useful introduction for you for diet. I really want to stress that there's some fascinating learning to do here which will develop going forward and obviously to stress that you guys have a good understanding of uh, chemical and mechanical digestion and sort of the idea of substrates in your biology study we're going to try and build on that uh, in in other tutorials cheers